Hi everyone, I'm back. Welcome to a new series right here where we're going to try and go into the future now. Uh, I made some series about uh, C Sharp, clean architecture, I made some series about Angular, I made series about Postman, I made a lot of different series, but they're all starting to be kind of outdated with some missing things, some new features, whatever, so I'm going to try and make it again. And uh, this is going to be my new series that we're going to start today. And it's going to be the Egg Production App 2020. That's the new series that we want to start building here, and there's going to be a lot in this series. So we're just going to get started slowly today. And uh, today I just want to start out by giving you an introduction to what it's all going to be about and what we're going to end up with uh, in this series right here. Now, first of all, the focus in the beginning will mainly be our backend. That's what we're going to talk about in the first part of the series. And then slowly we'll move into actually talking about a front end. And in the end, you'll know how to do a full web feature. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how you, for instance, can use an Angular app to actually go and grab some data uh, from a backend. So here we're going to send a request when we're done and that request is going to be passed on to a web API which is going to talk to some services, going to talk to some repositories, get some data, get the data back, send it all the way back to the web application when it's done com communicating with all these layers that we're going to build and in the very end it's going to actually end up putting that into the app and presenting some data. We're going to do the same for creating, reading, updating and deleting data for an application and when you're at that point you hopefully know how to work with data both on a back end and on a front end. So it's going to be a total full stack series but I'm going to be kind of restricted to my uh, the way that I build my layers to the way the technology I choose. This is going to be C Sharp for instance. That's my choice right here. I'm going to use the entity framework for talking to the database. I'm going to use Angular as the front end in the first series and then we're going to try React and Yonic as two other series later. Um, and I also want to really focus on unit testing. So I'm going to do as much testing as I possibly can in my setup right here, starting in the first series with doing unit testing against services. And not only unit testing, I'm going to actually do test-driven development in most cases. And then I'm going to focus on, as I said, single feature development, meaning that if you want a feature to present all the eggs, or sorry, all the chickens you have available in your, in your hen house, right, then I actually have one feature for that and I'm going to complete that feature all the way down to the data source and all the way back to the front end application and when that is done with testing with everything that we need to kind of do that in the back end we are going to uh, finalize that by setting a small check mark for that single feature and that's I think that's one thing that most developers forget especially new developers they just kind of jump into making all features at once either just by making full create, read, update, and delete in the repository, and then making it all in the service, and then in the web API, and then they figure out, we don't need all of that in the front end, so we just wasted a lot of time. And why didn't we use that time on unit testing instead of actually just putting in different methods, right? So I kind of want to give you guys that mindset to be more um, slow down, right, and try to be better at testing your code instead, and I hope you can see the value of that when this series is actually done. So that's kind of the goal of the series and next lesson I'm going to try to give you guys an overview about the setup that I decided to use over here where we're going to use both the clean, uh, the clean architecture with two different ways of using the clean architecture. One is what's called the onion architecture, I'll talk a little bit about that and the second part is actually hexadiagonal uh, architecture where they, they use some, a different way to kind of present the the clean architecture and I'm going to kind of combine those two because I like them both of them so I'm going to make my own I don't know clean uh, hexadiagonal uh, onion architecture or something like that you'll see it you'll see the hopefully the value of doing this and I'm going to try every time to introduce why I'm doing what I'm doing uh, as much as possible so let's end it there and see you next time where we'll try and actually dive into the architecture that we're going to use for our backend code see you